year ago, I wrote uh, a little note to myself on a, in a piece of paper, and I stuck it in my Bible. Uh -huh. God's unforgotten promises. Sometimes we forget things. We tell our kids about a promise, and they'll never forget. They'll bring it back to our remembrance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sometimes we got to bring things that God promised us back to His memory. Sure. And, and as, as they was talking and testifying tonight, don't forget about your promises that God's promised you, yeah. because there's more to come. Yeah. He's not for God. We may, I mean, our time might not be His time. And things might not be the, the perfect time, yeah. but everything's going to work out in His time. Yeah. Amen. 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 Tonight, I'm not preaching or teaching anything that hasn't been preached or taught before. Actually, I preach this probably at least once a year, sometimes twice, because it is a very relevant topic, something that the church needs for its help. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 18, verse number 14. Proverbs 18, verse number 14. Where the Lord says, The spirit of the man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit will food his back. Uh -huh. yeah. The spirit of the man will sustain his infirmity. A sickness, an ailment, a physical wound, sure. your spirit's all right with it. It'll be all right. It'll be all good. Yeah. But if you get a wound in your spirit, yeah. it's hard to bear. Yeah. It sure is. It's hard to bear. Tonight I want to talk to us for just a little bit because there again this is another one of those messages where my people were destroyed for lack of knowledge. Sometimes the Lord quickens back the word of God to us for our benefit, for our health, and for our healing. So tonight I want to talk to us about healing with a wounded spirit. Amen. Lord, I'm just going to step out of the way tonight and let you have your way. Speak to us, Lord. Every heart, every mind, every soul. Let there be healing in this house. Let there be deliverance in this house. That there be salvation tonight. I thank you for it in advance. And I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that comes tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. <clears throat> People of the story of the lack of knowledge. Anybody ever been hurt? Anybody ever been hurt in the spirit? Yes, sir. Some folks, one of the main ways that they get hurt in the spirit, you'll hear people say, I've been church hurt. Yeah. yeah. My church family hurt. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. You know, it hurts, and it hurts deep, right. and it's a real hurt. 
But you know it's been going on for a long time. Yes, sir. I told you before, Joseph was thrown in a pit and sold as a slave by his church family. That's right. His brothers. That was his church family. They had church together just to the daddy. Went in and sat down and teach them boys. That's right. And the church is what hurt him. Uh-huh. Yes. He's hurt deep. You don't think so, just remember when he came back and laid eyes on him the first time. Mm-hmm. Said he got he got angry at first, but then he went out and cried. So he was hurting in the spirit. How did Joseph ever get over it? He had to forgive his brothers. For the wrong that they had done. For the things that they had done. Now in the process, Joseph, we know the story, we know that Joseph was very much blessed by the Lord. But it took a while. He went through a lot of adversity at first, but he was very blessed. Bless beyond measure. He was not only hurt by the brothers, he was hurt by the cook and the, you know, the chef or the butler and the baker. I mean, he was hurt by them. They told him, yeah, we'll go about you. Never said a word. And then later on down, or before that, actually, he thought, you know, he was working there for Paul for his life. Everything's going good. Man, his boss loved him. And his wife heard it. Uh-huh. All for the Yep. He just kept getting hurt. But how did he get by all that? By forgiveness. Yep. He forgave it. Proverbs 17 22 tells us that a merry heart do it good like a medicine. We all know that. A merry heart does a good life medicine. But we always stop before we read the last part of that verse. It says, but a broken spirit drives the ball. Hmm. But you know what? I read another story in the Bible about a valley drive on. And the word of the Lord came. And he told the man of God, he said, speak yes. to these dry bones. That's right. That's right. And he spoke and it said that life came back into him. Sinews yes. upon sinews. Yes. That's right. And they stood up. Yes. Sometimes you got to speak positivity and speak healing into your situation. If not, those bones will dry up and get brittle and turn to dust and be no good. That's right. That's right. No good anymore. You know, there was a, oh, my name, my name is not going. I never preach this sign, though, but for the jest of it. But there was a king. Yeah. And I cannot remember his name now. He took over king. I mean, he was a pretty good man. I ain't getting on the notch this year. But anyway, the Lord sent a man of God to him. And he said, he cursed him. More or less of him. He said, everything you got is going to go away. Your children will not sit on the throne. And the man turned around and pointed at the man of God and said, Take it. And when he did, his hand with it. Right up. And what did he do? He didn't start saying, Oh, you called my hand to do this. He said, Man of God, pray for me. I forgive you for what you said to me. Just pray for me. And have the Lord restore my hand, and the man of God prayed for him, and the arm grew right back. Yeah. He went back to 
know what? It makes you feel a whole lot better. It makes you feel a whole lot better when you get things all took care of. You know? Because then what you've done is you, you have healed that scab. So now that that hat, that scab is healed up, now you can come to the altar. Now you can come to the Lord and pray. Now you can come and pray. Now you can come. I don't know. Now if you don't have to worry anymore about, well, I'm, I'm not worthy, Lord. I, 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 I want to forgive them, but you know, they're just dumbness so around.
It needs to be an every week occurrence. It needs to be something that we, we constantly continue to keep doing it. Because if you don't, and you continue to hold the bitterness, you begin to, you, you continue to hold that pain and that resentment, then what, what happens is you begin to get a root in there. A root of bitterness will spring up. And once that root takes hold, it's hard to dislodge that thing. It's hard to pull it out. Right. Amen. I heard Brother David Shadwell said that he was praying, he was preaching this message. <clears throat> and he said that there was three ladies there. And said that they were, he was praying with them. They came up for prayer because they had resentment, shame, hurt. Uh, he said that one, of them, one or two of them had been molested as a child. And he said that there was such a, there was such a deep resentment there. And said that he said that they were all lined up praying. And as he began to pray for them, one of the ladies said, Ah! She said, What's wrong? She said, My oh, God. She said, It felt like somebody ripped something out of my core. Root of bitterness. Yeah. yeah. God had removed it. Comes a part of you if you know that. That's right. right. That, that bitterness grows into a tree. It grows into something that just sucks the life out of you. Right. It's hard to get by. It's hard to get around. Uh -huh. Bitterness will destroy you. It's just like a, it's just like a willow tree. You put a willow tree on a small pond. And that thing, the roots start to grow. They're right on the surface. But that thing will start growing. And its roots will go out into that water. And it will suck the life out of that pond. It will suck that pond dry. This is That's what the root of bitterness will do to you. It will suck the life out of you. It will suck the love of God out of you. Because of the hurt, because of the anguish, because of the pain. That's right. That's right. Forgiveness. It's the only way to keep that root of bitterness from being ever established, to ever get a hold. That's right. But if you'll truly forgive, God will take that out. He'll sure. remove that. So that you can be healthy once again. So that you can be happy once again. So that you can live as He intended for you once again. Amen. You just got to tear the roots out. Two. Number one, we ask the Lord. We say, Lord, I forgive them for what they've done to me. They did this, 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 and this. And I forgive them for it. Number two, now you say, Lord, I forgave them for it. Now when you come and you get the spirit of Yes, sir. Lord, don't hold to their charge what they've done. Right. Right. In other words, Lord, I forgave them. Now I'm asking you to forgive them. Yeah. I'm asking you, Lord, don't hold it to their charge. That's, right. that's hard. If you've been hurt deep, that's hard to do. That's right. But when you do it, when you do it, there will be such a healing. There again, you'll feel these roots start to be snatched out. You'll feel those roots. Oh my God. Somebody hurts you deep, you say, I forgive them. Sometimes, if we're not careful, that's lip service. But when we say, God, I forgive. I forgave them for what they've done. Yes, sir. 
what they've done. That's right. Now I ask you That's right. to wipe their slate clean. That's right. Forgive them, oh Lord, for what they've done, for what everything, Lord, I ask you to please forgive them. I release them, Lord, into your hands. And I ask you to wipe it clean. That's right. Never sin again, Lord, that they did anything wrong to me because I don't want them to be held accountable. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 7, verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. With his dying voice. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And as soon as he said it, he fell asleep. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you. As soon as he died, as soon as he released, no, Lord, don't hold it against him. God said, it's enough. It's enough. You can't be saved and hold on to him. just can't happen. It just can't happen. The Lord also said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they did. Oh, my God. They were killing him. They were crucified. They were beating him. They were gambling for his clothes. Oh, how easy would it be to hold on against them for that? But the Lord said, I don't know what you're doing. They don't realize what you're doing. They don't realize that the devil's using them. That's right. That's right. But then the flip side of that, he was saying, Lord, yeah. The devil has went <laughs> and he said, bone upon bone, flesh upon flesh, if you'll let me. And the Lord said, go ahead, but save their, save their life.
There's another R here. Sometimes the hurt comes from a deeper underlying problem. Because sometimes, here's the thing, God forgave us of our sins whenever we came to repeat it. He forgave us of our sins. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Sins are forgiven. But, sometimes there may still be an underlying old hurt or something that we have done to someone that we have not forgiven ourselves for. That's right. That's the truth. I did something, Lord, and, and I know you've forgiven me, but Lord, I just can't get that out of my mind. I just can't turn that loose. The Lord is sitting there and he's saying, I don't see it because it's under the blood. But to you, you have not yet forgiven yourself for those feelings, for those actions. Or for something else that may have happened, you have not forgiven yourself yet. If you cannot forgive yourself, how can you forgive somebody else? That's right. That's right. It's hard to forgive yourself for things. A whole lot harder it is to forgive somebody else. Mm -hmm. I know it is for this one. Mm -hmm. Hey, none of y'all in here can be as hard on me as me. That's the truth. None of you. I'm hard on this one. First time I heard this message from the David Shepherd of the tragedy of the wounded spirit. Back in the window of my soul. And I started realizing that there was things that I said, Lord, I should not be here. There's no way I should be saved. There's no way I should be living for you. There's no way I should be preaching the word of God. There's no way because of the things I've done in the past, Lord God. How can you forgive it when I can't? And then the Lord let me know. 
He says, I'm just. Yeah. And faithful. To forgive your sins. When you ask, He's just. He's faithful. He's just and he's faithful. Yeah, he know he said we all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. We all mess up. That's why the Bible says plainly, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. For when I fall, not if I fall, when I fall, I shall rise. Amen. I'm not going to stay down. I'm not going to let this oppress me. I'm not going to let this depress me. I'm not going to let it keep me down. I've got to get this stuff took care of. situation. I could see what was happening. And I said, God, why didn't you save me? Why didn't you get me out of that situation? Why did you let it happen to me? Right. God said, but you'll realize. He said, your body was being defined. Blank God. And so you weren't there. You didn't do anything. God 
saying, I will keep you, your sanity. That's right, Lord. We've got to forgive the person. We've got to ask God to forgive them. Right. We've got to forgive ourselves. But most of all, we've got to forgive God. Right here. It can be done tonight. 
All it takes is a forgiving, forgiving heart. Stand with me tonight. Are you tired? Are you tired of fighting? Are you tired of running? Are you tired of not having victory? Are you tired of having defeat? I want everybody to come if you will. Just come to this altar. Come to this altar. But if you've got all of your heart, stop before you get here and turn it loose so that God can, can heal your body tonight, so He can heal this soul tonight, so He can take this pain out of you tonight. It don't have to leave here. It don't have to, it don't have to go with you. You can leave it right here before this altar. You can put it under the blood right now and forever be changed, forever have that joy that comes with a merry heart, that healing that comes with a merry heart. Come on, you can leave it right here tonight. Amen. You can leave your pain. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get healing right now. Come on, let's begin to speak to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. If you got any all your heart against anybody, 